encounter priority queues in our daily lives. When we go to the airport, everybody has to join the queue. But if you are in danger of missing the flight, you get the jump queue. So that's a priority queue. So, before I show you some code, let's do some definitions. And Q is to join the queue. DQ is to remove the item, the, the job, from the queue so that it can be processed. Uh, some people call it head, I call it head. Some people call it peak. Look at the front of the queue to see if there's anything there. And length of the queue. So here's the first bit of code. Uh, I named my package very unimaginatively Q. Uh, and I've defined a Q interface. So NQ actually takes an empty interface type, which means it can take anything in Go. And if there's an error, it returns an error. DQ, the same. Len is the special one, it returns an integer. Although I should actually put unsigned integer, but integer, that was easy. So, let's define a first-in, first-out queue. Uh, that's a lowercase s. And uh, I decided to implement my first-in, first-out queue as a slice, uh, an array. Uh, there's a difference, but a slice in Go. A slice of empty interfaces, which means you can take anything. And I decide to initialize my FIFO by creating a function called new FIFO. And all it does is it allocates that slice and it returns a pointer to that slice. And it's lowercase s because I don't want to expose it to the world as an internal implementation. You can swap out an implementation later if you like. So here's the implementation proper. And Q, all it does is uses the internal function append. It appends the thing to the slice. DQ essentially removes the head item from the, from the slice and trims the slice. Uh, we set some that unused element to nil to make sure that the garbage collector collects it. Head just looks at the head element and length just returns the length of the slice. It's a very simple, workable, I hope. We'll test it in a while, in a minute. Implementation. So let's test it. Uh, that's how you write tests in Go. Uh, of course, I'm speaking to a Go crowd here, and you should not be a stranger to testing, but if you are, testing is one of the best aspects of Go. So this is just the internal testing package. And uh, let's go ahead and run the test to see whether this test runs. Uh, test pass, okay. And it took zero seconds. Well, nothing surprising there. All it does in the test is when I allocate a new FIFO, I check that if it is nil, I've got a problem. It didn't allocate anything, any slice for me. And if the length doesn't start off empty, I've also got a problem. So, very simple, basic test. So, let's go and actually enqueue and dequeue something. So, here's my test. I create a new FIFO. I enqueue the integer 2. So number two is now on the queue, and I perform a DQ operation. This O dot int is a is a typecast for interfaces. It's just a Go language feature that needs to be needs to be there uh, when you're dealing with uh, interface types. If it's not equal to integer two, DQ fail. And when you run it, uh, that's a type assertion actually, not typecast. When you run it, it passes, I hope. <coughs> so, a second DQ test. I enqueue the integer 1. 
I'm going to, I'm going to do something strange now. I'm going to enqueue a string. This to prove that you can enqueue anything. It doesn't have to be the same type because it's an, an, an empty interface. And if I dequeue it, first in, first out, it should be dequeued one. And the second dequeue should be boy. Well, let's run the test. And it passes. Well, of course it passes, otherwise I won't be presenting. So, how do you handle error conditions? Um, I haven't found my error path yet. Uh, I'm still searching, maybe you can share some of the thoughts. Um, I decided to create a Q error type with, with the error interface, uh, which satisfies the error interface. And when I create a new error, I say create a new error type with a message. Um, I guess this one works. Another method could be to just use the errors new method, which is a built-in function in the standard library. This looks simpler. Uh, this looks more straightforward. I'm still trying to figure out what to do with errors. But anyway, uh, I've decided to do something like this in my code. If the length is not zero, return error, Q is empty, that sort of thing. So, the next step is uh, priority queue, which I'm not going to implement because there's already an implementation. If you go to the standard library, container heap, that's a priority queue. You map that onto this queue semantics and you have a priority queue. So I leave this an exercise. But the more interesting thing is, so far, what I do want to talk about is I've been talking about a single queue so far. I've got a single FIFO, a single LIFO, a single priority queue. In complex systems, you have systems of queues, numbers of queues, multiple queues. So, how do you handle multiple queues? The most obvious method and the method which we are all familiar with is starting with R. Anybody? Round? Round Robin. So when we service multiple queues, we encounter this situation in load balances, for example, all the time in load balances. Round Robin is a, a common uh, strategy. Earliest deadline first for strategic defense initiative. Shortest, easiest jobs first. I, I think in life sometimes we do this. Uh, let's do the easiest jobs first. And this thing which I find extremely interesting, which is used heavily in networks and in operating systems, fair queuing. The concept of fair queuing is to maximize throughput through a system. And that, as an engineer, uh, is very interesting for me. So I'm going to talk about fair queuing. So before I talk about fair queuing, round robin. We take one entry from each queue, one after the other. Uh, all queues get an equal chance of being serviced. There is no job starvation. The problem is uh, long jobs have the same priority as short jobs. So imagine you're at a hawker center and your job is to tap out just one packet of chicken rice. But in front of you, there are two other people who want to tap out for their whole factory. 20 packets and 30 packets. So it's not very fair, right? Not very fair at all. So round robin doesn't work very well. Earliest deadline first. Here's the concept of a deadline in each job. The head of the, each queue is scanned for their deadlines and the one with the earliest deadline gets served first. The problem with that is last minute jobs get done. Those with short deadlines, I mean deadlines that are going to appear in the next few minutes, they get priority and they get done. And it penalizes those people who plan their work. So, uh, I guess this would be good for 
all, all, all of us last minute workers, but it's not very fair. Shortest, easiest job. Uh, the advantage is short, easy jobs get run frequently. The disadvantage is the converse of it. Long jobs get staffed. Long, perhaps important jobs get staffed and never get run. So you have a problem there. So the Tapao 1 packet, very fast. The people with the Tapao 100 packets or 10 packets, very slow, they take their business elsewhere. So this is important if you are doing well, a taxi booking application, stuff like this, because it affects your response time to your end user. So anyway, back to how do we get a fair queue? So the fair queue concept is quite simple. If I have five jobs which take two minutes each, and I have two jobs that take five minutes each, both queues should clear roughly at the same time. That's the fair queuing concept. So each job or queue item has a time cost and an estimated finish time. And uh, the, each individual queue has an overall finish time of the last job. All this comes from, I didn't invent all this, I'm not smart enough to invent algorithms. So I just lifted off some pseudocode from Wikipedia. And uh, I'm sure they themselves got it from some, uh, some from <coughs> algorithm conference somewhere or well-known algorithm somewhere. Uh, but I want to test out how easy is it to map something like this into Go code. So, and share my adventure with you, my experience with you. So it starts off with constant equals 10. Um, Max time, I have to use the time package. Something which I found quite interesting for testing was how do I test time? Because queue, priority queues work with time. So what is the concept of now? So I had to define a clock called a type called now er, like string er, now er. So it's just anything that produces the method now. So the clock is a, a now -er type. Uh, and I have n FIFOs, in this case n equals 10 and the last virtual finish time is a time so I've got 10 queues basically and each queue is a FIFO <coughs> the next thing I had to implement was the receive function so the first thing they do is choose a queue I've got 10 queues, I have to slot somebody into one of those 10 queues. So, choose queue is your function. For me, you will see later, I'll just, for testing purposes, I just shove everybody into queue number one. Not very scientific. You should actually use something more interesting. And queue it for that particular queue, and update its time characteristics. How long the job's going to take, and so on and so forth. So in practice, choose queue will be based on things like some characteristic of the job. Uh, if you have an important customer, for example, it's based on a customer account ID or a customer range, he gets his own priority queue or his own set of queues with uh, processing characteristics. Or uh, depends on job type, short jobs, long jobs, they would be assigned to a different set of queues. So you would assign, choose queue would be a function which you would write uh, to fit your own business rules. For me, for testing purposes, I just shove everything to queue one number one. From zero to nine, I choose the second queue. A real implementation, if you want to evenly spread the thing across all your queues, is to use the hashing function. Uh, there's an FNV hash function available in the standard library. Works very well, very lightweight. Um, and nothing more said, works well as a great hashing function. Update time, no surprises as well, works fine. Um, it basically 
is to tell the queuing system, this job is a long job, so uh, it's going to finish later, and you can take that into consideration when you are trying to take the next job. So that's what update time does. I won't actually go through the code, uh, but what send does is it takes the job and sends it off uh, to be processed. The rest of send is a five is a, just a five DQ. Let's see what am I trying to say down here? Yeah, it's just a five four DQ. So select queue is another part of the algorithm. Uh, I'm just realizing that this is quite boring for you guys because unless you actually write through the code, uh, trying to absorb this in the session of in this session is going to be problematic. But anyway, the idea is I don't want to process empty queues. Uh, and I want to select the queue with the earliest estimated finish time. So this is effectively first come first serve, weighted by the job cost. So it's weighted first come first serve. This algorithm implements weighted first come first serve. Uh, and it penalizes long jobs automatically and it considers arrival time of jobs as well. So that's how select queue works. <coughs> testing is in interesting now. Uh, testing is interesting because of time concepts. So I highlighted a line here, clock equals clock fake. So in my test, I use a fake clock. And what does the fake clock do? What does the fake, fake clock do? The fake clock, when you ask it, what time is it now? It always says it's year 2000, January 1st, <coughs> midnight, 0000, zero, zero, zero. always. So you know when you add 10 seconds to it, it's deterministic. It's never ever going to shift. So this is one easy way of testing time-based functions. And time-based functions are very important in queues because we are, we are penalizing people if they come late, we are penalizing jobs if they take a long time, etc. So it's all time-based and you have to create your own fake clock. So this is just uh, me sharing how I test my package. So how does the priority, uh, not priority queue, how does the fair queue work? So let's try testing uh, the system. J1 is a job with job ID J1. J2 has a job ID J2. I enqueue both of them. And I decide to select one job to be processed, sent. So the first job, it, it should be 5 -fold. If it's not J1, I flag an error. If the second job is not J2, I flag an error. And that's how you test a 5 q You can tweak the timing parameters and you, you should expect the reverse, for example. You can test an underflow situation. What's an underflow situation? You enqueue one job, you deliver one job, and you try to deliver again. It's an empty queue now. There's, there is no more jobs to be processed. So it should show idle job or no job. Otherwise, flag an error. So that's how you can thoroughly test your queuing system without actually asking 100 people to queue up or without actually performing a real queuing operation. So run the test. Of course, it should pass. Actually, same thing. Actually, I shall do this. And it says all the individual tests are good. The actual code is available from GitHub. All this code and testing is available from GitHub. All you need to do is go get the code. 
from that location. I'll leave you to take photos of that if you want. Or you can look up uh, the screencast. It's available yeah, later. Right? Uh, and this tool which I use to present stuff is called the Go Present Tool. I highly recommend it. Uh, useful. Uh, it's just a text file. Don't bother with PowerPoint. Um, so, and that's my presentation. Thank you. Any questions? Yes. Uh, as a very meaning about the fair queue, uh, you are saying that uh, the purpose of the fair queue is try to maximize the throughput. Yes. But then after that, you are saying that the purpose of the fair queue is try to make all the individual queue finish at almost the same time. I, I, I am a bit confusing about this two concepts. Because uh, trying to maximize the uh, support is a bit different with the... Absolutely right. Absolutely right. Um, the, the fair queue does... Uh, does to be... F okay. The fair queue tries to be fair to all the queue uh, jobs, right? While trying to maximize throughput. Um, okay. Um, but you're right. Uh, in a doctor's office, you always want to maximize the resource. That's why you always ask people to queue up. And the doctor's always busy, and the people are always waiting in the waiting room. But that's very bad customer service, I feel. So that's why fair queuing is very powerful, because the people who are waiting in the waiting room get uh, processed uh, in, a, in a perceived fair manner. So that uh, the people who buy 100, 100 packets of chicken rice, and the people who buy one packet of chicken rice feel they are very treated in a fair queuing system. And this is very important in the computer system where there's no person making moral judgments. Yes? Just, just wondering, uh, using built-ins like channels and select statements where they randomly can pick a channel, could we kind of replicate the fair queue using that built-in or is it limited to just a kind of first in first out thing? Because I think we see the people as channels implemented with select statements, uh, either buffered or unbuffered, and then you just drain it. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I don't know if it's possible, but did you think about using channels and could a fair queue be implemented? Mm -hmm. uh, I guess you could, but channels, in my view, are more for concurrent jobs and go routines. Uh, this actually is not <coughs> so much a concurrent job because it's actually, by definition, not concurrent. Sorry, you got to wait. <laughs> But interesting idea, uh, and channels and goal routines were one of the things that attracted me to go in the first place. It's a fantastic uh, language feature. Yeah, I mean, the, the pattern I was thinking of is just you know, one goal routine as just uh, draining the queue or queues, um, and another goal routine was pushing it into, uh, into the queue or channel in this case. Yeah, actually, that, that would work uh, exactly the same as a slice, actually. Modern time doesn't guarantee you fast. No, no, it's, it's random. Yeah, no, it's, it's random. It doesn't guarantee you So there's no queue discipline, um, but it, there is a first come, first in, first out queue discipline in in a buffer in the buffer channel. So if you make a buffer channel, it's first in, first out. But if you have multiple channels, then I, I, I don't know enough about Go, but I think the select statement is just random, randomly picking from multiple channels. So. Yeah, it's just interesting to look up later if anybody's Yeah, actually that's an interesting thought because if you have, let's say, multiple channels, buffer channels, and they all have jobs running, so the select statement will just select at random, uh, and uh, you have left your decision to go, uh, and you haven't taken control of which which queue you want to select. So that's that's why this kind of implementations. Yeah, yeah. No other, thank you again. Questions?